Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we're going to be talking about seven things you must see in Rome. That's right. If you're a Catholic traveling to the Eternal City, these are the out of the way spots that most people don't visit that you need to see. If all roads lead to Rome, these are the places you need to see. Happy to have you guys back uh, here in the studio again with Ryan and Father Rich. Hey, hey guys. guys. What's happening? How's it doing? Yeah, this is a pretty cool episode. I've been to Rome once mm -hmm. and uh, went to some pretty cool places. I've been a handful of times and I discover something new every time I go to the Eternal okay. City. There's so many hidden gems throughout the ancient roadways and uh, of, uh, of Rome, certainly. So I, I look forward to hearing these seven places. Yeah, it's such an interesting city how the treasures of antiquity are so fully integrated into the city, unlike anywhere else in the world where you are right in the middle of history and modernity at the same time, where other cities, they're really kind of locked off and behind walls or in excavations. Here, it is part of the ebb and flow of the city. Now, the reason we're talking about this is because we're going on a trip, right? We are going on a 10-day pilgrimage to Poland and Rome. So we've talked about John Paul II and his life in Poland before, so we really wanted to take this episode to focus on the aspects of what a Catholic can expect to see in Rome and some things that are incredibly powerful, uh, historic, and things that most people don't think of when they go to Rome because most of the time you're like, well, let's see the fountains or let's see the Colosseum. But these are some really uh, incredible spots that are, I think, less well known. And for a Catholic, pilgrimage is intimately a part of the journey of life. And mm -hmm. it's important to make pilgrimage because there are fruits associated with this type of uh, a way of life, like, you know, living one's life as a pilgrimage, encountering God along the way, and certainly visiting locations uh, that, that hold a great historical prominence or houses the life of a saint and their memory and their body uh, for display and veneration, it's important to, to realize that this helps us along the way of faith, and it reinforces what they've instructed through their example. And, you know, talk about roadways, and, and we're about to talk about these seven locations in Rome that you really need to check out before you die. Well, before you die, you need to check out the roadway that will lead you to catholictalkshow.com. There you'll find out every way that you could listen in or view. We're on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Catholic Talk Show, you could hit the button subscribe and click the little bell next to the button subscribe. And that will ensure you to receive every type of production that we put out there in the enters of webs. Also, a big shout out to our patrons. Without our patrons, we wouldn't be able to produce this content and put it out in all these various means. So go to patreon.com forward slash Catholic Talk Show, and you'll see different tiers to be able to support us financially to ensure us to produce this show into the future. Absolutely. So like I said, the reason we're talking about this is, number one, because Rome is, from the very beginning of the church, it has been the center and almost the beating heart of the Catholic Church. And we are um, May 13th to the 22nd. Uh, you're all invited. We want you to go with us. Uh, we're going on a pilgrimage. And one of the stops, uh, so first we're going to Poland and experiencing the life and the um, the formative years of Pope John Paul II when he was still Karowatia in Poland. But then we're going to end up in Rome, right? And when we're there, um, there's some, some time that you're going to have on this trip to go and do some things on your own. And these are some of the suggestions that we would make. Now, mm -hmm. Um, why is Rome so important to the Catholic Church? Um, from the very beginning, Rome was the, the it was the most important city in the world at the time. And how did Rome become so central to Catholicism when uh, it was founded in in Judea, right. in in, in uh, uh, the Galilee, and in Jerusalem? Well, obviously, Rome is the was the capital of the empire, and the first pope, and it was at the height of the Roman Empire absolutely. at that time. And uh, Saint Peter himself went there. So all the apostles, uh, after the Great Commission and after the Ascension, they all went to different corners of the world. Thomas went to India. Philip went to Ethiopia. Uh, you know, they all spread out all across the world. Well, Peter 
went to Rome. And being the head of the apostles and the prince of the apostles, it only makes sense that he was, uh, that's where he was called to go. And he was the first bishop of Rome, and by that virtue, he is the first pope, right? And that, that makes a lot of sense. And that's why to this day, the pope or the bishop of Rome is the leader of the church because that is the direct successor of Peter yeah. in that Petrine, Petrine ministry. So Pretty cool. Very cool. Is. Yeah. So I think the first place that you have to see in Rome is really intrinsically tied to that, and that is the Scabi tour. Now, you guys have both been on that, correct? Mm, yeah. So why don't you tell our listeners what the Scavi Tour is? So yeah, the Scavi Tour, we went on. I went on with my wife and a priest friend of ours, and it was led by a friend of mine that we ran into who was in the seminary that was from my parish. In so you Maryland. ran into him randomly? Randomly. He was giving the tour. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. But it, it, they take a small group of people in, and you go through this archaeological, you know, dig that took place 50 or 60 years ago. And you're going through and you're, you're looking at all these tombs of these Christians. Underneath St. Peter's. Underneath St. Peter's uh, Basilica. So you, you go underneath the Basilica. And it ends where, uh, and the story that they weave, it ends with uh, Peter's bones and his tomb and why, the, why they came to the conclusion that they discovered his bones. And it was really a beautiful trip. And his bones are actually underneath the altar in some way. I mean, the, directly underneath the main altar of St. Yeah. Peter. So if you were to drop, you know, a coin from yeah. the cupola straight down through the Baldacchino, the yeah. main altar in St. Peter's Basilica underground to where the altar was, where, where St. Peter's remains were discovered through right. this excavation. What was it? It was like the forties or something like that. Pius the 12th. Pius the 12th. Yeah. And, and it's fascinating the way you're describing it. I'm, I'm just, I'm going back into that experience myself of my first travels. I've been three or four times on the Scavi, the Scavi tour. And it's true. The, the anticipation and the excitement as you're walking around these ancient roads that were excavated underneath the Vatican. And as you move closer and closer to the location where St. Peter's remains are, you get an overwhelming sense of this is a sacred, sacred yeah. space. And you see the graffiti, this Christian graffiti growing, you know, mm. and, and then you come up to this place right next to the Clementine Chapel and have a moment of silent prayer mm. and reflection to think that Christ literally built upon yeah. the Petra, the rock, yeah, his, yeah. his church. Yeah, what's so crazy is like, I'm a skeptic naturally. I don't like to like, oh, here's Peter's bones. Just, you know, wholesale, just believe it. Um, but one of the things about Rome, which is so interesting, it's, it's interesting, is is that they they have they've built on top of things and so so there's it, actual archaeological layers so yeah it's this, crazy this it's area, like okay this like, area would have been a road uh, right. during St Peter's time right. and it would have been like a uh, almost like small monuments to individual yeah. uh, people who died along who the died. way and who died just just down the street mm -hmm. at the circus with like little tubes that come out of the ground for yeah. libations that yeah. people would pour into yeah. you know it's it's really yeah, interesting. So back in the in the Roman times, cemeteries weren't a bunch of headstones. It was basically along main thoroughfares or along roads. You would see different monuments because people would want to be seen and remembered. Mm -hmm. And this street happened to be right by where Saint Peter was martyred, and then they buried him in a small uh, you know mausoleum nearby and. The Vatican is built on top of it. It's not like it's flattened. It's like yeah. pillars. Like you can walk Layers. in the city streets of first yeah. century Rome and see it the way that the people walking there would have and where Peter was buried. Yeah. And then like they got churches over, like we went to this one church and it's over a saint's house mm -hmm. and you're, you're in the sacristy and you're looking through a glass floor at this house. And so you it's just weird to me, you know, cause you're, you know, here we are in Houston, you just kind of build and it fans out here. They're like, we're going to put a church here and somehow we're just going to build something on top and then the church. So just like the, 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 the mere thought of building something there on top of something else just blows my mind. And it's everywhere. It's not just what the church is. It's the whole city. You go underneath it and you go underneath it. And it's just like, this is like from this era. This is from, you know, it's crazy. It's like mind blowing. So the Vatican, it's called the Vatican because it was built, built on the Vatican Hill and it was literally a sloped hill. And to be able to account and to build the Basilica of St. Peter's, they had to cut away a lot of the hill so that there's level ground. 
and that process, and because of that slope of that hill, preserved that uh, you know that street as it was. So going on the Scabby tour, really very cool. I mean, that's yeah. underneath the Vatican. It's archaeological. It's spiritual, and you get to ultimately lead up to the bones of Saint Peter, which I mean. As a Catholic, I mean, that is just so incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful place down there for prayer. Like, there's some tombs from mm -hmm. past popes around that area, too. It's just a it's a very humbling place to be. And where you come out, you come out the Clementine Chapel yeah. into that location where yeah. all of these popes' remains throughout history are yeah. right there under the subfloor mm -hmm. of the main nave of yeah. St. Peter's Basilica, it's, a, it's, in most, it's one of the most there. important. We're going we're to celebrate, celebrate mass, mass at the altar of St. John Paul II. And I'm That's telling amazing. you, that, is, that place, that space emanates just holiness, man. It like, really I does. got goosebumps talking about it where you're just like, wow, the presence of God here is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you want to see that, make sure you're joining us on this pilgrimage because yeah. we'd love to experience that with you. Yeah, if you're uh, interested in, in learning more about this pilgrimage, go to Catholic Talk Show forward slash pilgrimage and you'll see exactly what we're doing from Poland to Rome and ultimately uh, to realize all roads lead to Rome. Absolutely. We're actually going to finish this pilgrimage in Rome, which was one of the mandated pilgrimages for many years in still? the Catholic Church. It's not still. They, they don't drive that home pastorally. That that That's a shame. there's a requirement. I I truly believe we need to bring that back. We've had episodes where we've thought about bringing back traditions in the mm. Catholic Church. I think the tradition of pilgrimage is one of the most important realities to the spiritual life that one must experience. And before. different cultures, like Spanish culture, Hispanic, Latin American, different cultures have their own sort of pilgrimage mm -hmm. culture. You know, like the the San Juan de, de Compostelo, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's a big pilgrimage in Europe and 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 his Latin America and you know that's a big big deal and and even you know pilgrimages in the sense of what do you do when you when you walk from your home to your local parish historically that's how you got there yeah. and you're walking with people from your community that live in your neighborhood and you're walking for say 10 15 20 minutes 30 minutes from your particular location and think about you know sharing the water, sharing snacks, entering into well, conversation. Not on the way there. Maybe not on the way fasting home. on the way home. <laughs> but but this, the sense of that, you know, people are sharing and communicating along the way and getting to know their neighbor and expressing empathy and compassion to your neighbor along the way. That's that's a whole sense of how we ought to live our life. But because of modernity, because of this sense of individualism and relativism that we have embedded in our culture, we don't have opportunities where we are walking next to our neighbor and having those conversations along the way. Pilgrimage provides that right now. You're in a bus with 50 people and you are... Yeah interacting with strangers and you're getting to know people at a deeper level. And over the course of 10 days, 12 days on pilgrimage, you begin to develop a friendship, a, a lifelong connection with people that you've encountered what is sacred with. Yeah. There's a beautiful movie done by Stella Mar films called apparition Hill. And they basically brought a group to a, a holy site, a Medjugorje, and man, alleged I'm, holy site, alleged holy site. Yes. It's still under it's whatever. approved for pilgrimage by Pope Francis. Yeah. So anyways, the, the, that, oh, that look at movie, you throwing that at me. It's true. That movie shows this bond between these very different mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. I, I cried a lot. I'd like to also add Pope Benedict, who is one of your favorite people of all time. He said, what is happening in Medjugorje? People are going to confession. People are having conversions. People are adoring the Blessed Sacrament, attending Mass. Good things are happening in Medjugorje. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's not get into this wait. fight, guys. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so another location, and so the, the second pillar of the church in Rome and the founding of the church in Rome is, set, is definitely St. Paul. Oh, yeah. So one location in Rome is called uh, Trefontaine Abbey. And there's a, a lot of people have never, even if they've gone to Rome, and this is something that's missed now, by a lot of people. There's two awesome reasons to go to Trefontaine Abbey. Yeah. So number one. Have you been before? Never. No, okay. really? Yeah. This so is... Trefontaine means the three fountains. Mm -hmm. Now this is the site where St. Paul was executed by beheading. Shink. And when I it, feel bad. I didn't even know he was beheaded. Yeah. Holly. So when he was beheaded, his, just head, reminded. his head bounced three times. 
And each time it bounced, a spring of water Whoa. Float, jumped up from there. And oh. those are still there. That's why it's called Trey Fontaine, the three fountains. Wow. And there's this I long. Go. There's Are we going to go? We're going. We're going. We're going. Oh, we're going. Yeah. Dude, right when so we get into it, wait, hold on. It's going to get better. It's going to get okay. better. As you're as you're driving into this corridor, I have goosebumps. Honestly, it's, and, and I'm serious. The wind. It's so quiet. It's in the middle of the city, but it's so quiet. And the breeze and the wind there is just so different. And the trees are different. And you, you walk feel in, like it's you're like, in this, like an oasis. Or yeah, something, it, yeah. It, and I use the word eerie, but it's not eerie. It's it's like this mystic, mystical environment that you're that you're walking into, and these these three fonts. I mean, it feels like time is passing by so slowly when mm. you're there, and you're absorbing so much grace. It's one of the most incredible places wow. I've ever visited in the world, <laughs> let a, let alone Rome. So, being that it's called Tre Fontaine Abbey, that there's a monastery. There's a monastery, and that is the Cistercian Order of the Strict Observance, better known as Trappist. Yeah. Trappist. Look at that. So now you know how much we love Trappist beers. Oh yeah. They recently, two years ago, Trey Fontaine became the eleventh certified Cistercian. I'm sorry, um, Trappist Abbey to produce beer. So Ooh. they also have on this pilgrimage. We are going to Trey Fontaine <laughs> beer now. Wow. Which you would only assume. Has they're using water from their no site, way. so you can only assume that this water is related to the beer they make the from springs. the fountains of Saint Paul. Interesting. Did they that like is. go underneath the fountains to look at like where I don't this think is you all that up from? No, I mean it's you know it springs up from underground just like at Lords, right? Oh, okay. Now, one last cool fact about Tree Fontaine is um, these monks also, um, not monks, but. They also raise lambs there, right? Sheep. And they shear them, right? And they take this wool, and this is the wool that they use to make the pallium for all the new bishops. Mm -hmm. So when a bishop is consecrated as a bishop, the pope gives them a pallium, and that wool comes from this abbey. So there's so many. There's a confluence of things happening at Trey Fontaine. The springs where Paul's head bounced, the palliums, this beautiful location, and now beer. And the wool is actually kept right next to the Clementine Chapel, where we were describing in St. Peter's. When you're when you're walking up to the Baldacchino in the main altar in St. Peter's, you look underneath the staircase, and there's a location that has like it's it looks like a little treasure chest. Mm -hmm. And within that chest, there's this wool that that Ryan Shield is talking about that it's contained in there, and then they use that wool for the pallium, which wow. the Pope gives to the bishops on the feast of Peter and Paul. Yes, so it's held at Peter's with the contribution by Paul. Dang. It's just this. It's so beautiful. It's it is just such a mind blown here. Deeply huh? connected, two thousand years old of just history and nature. Jeez. And there's such it's, depth to everything wow. that the Catholic Church does. Yeah, and I think we we lose you know the whole sense of excavation. We lose contact with it, and we just kind of glaze over some of these yeah. things. Uh, when you go on pilgrimage, you can see firsthand what all of these symbols and sacred art depict and, and what the purpose is for them. And it, and it uncovers a beautiful history. Now, yeah. one thing about the beer, one interesting thing about the beer is that this Trappist beer actually is brewed with eucalyptus that grows wildly there at the Abbey in Rome. Hey. So thirsty guys, let's go, get, let's go see St. Paul. Look at the, look get at a, the sheep and, and get, get a, a Trappist beer. beer. Yeah. I, I think we definitely do that. Trappist beer. That's so, nice. yeah. I, so if you're going on the trip with us and you want to go for us with this beer, it's going to be awesome. It will. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. All right. So again, talking about Rome. So that's two. That's two. Three. Three. Again, this is something about Peter and Paul. restaurants too or just? No. Oh, I've got some great restaurants. Well, let's give, you can do that at the end. Okay. Yeah. All right. um, so the third location, again, is another site tied to Peter and Paul. And in Rome, there is still to this day an ancient prison, and it's the same prison that Peter and Paul were jailed in mm. when they were awaiting their execution. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Mamertine, Mamertine Prison. Yeah, the Mamertine Prison. I visited it's, there. It's a prison. Not There's not a church over it's, it or anything No, there's like a church that. over it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not even really a prison. It's more like a dungeon. Yeah. And it's right next to the Roman Forum. So you could you could picture in your mind when you're looking over the Roman Forum and you're, and you're seeing 
truly ancient Rome. It was like the center of town. Now you walk around the St. Peter's Basilica, that's further away. Mm -hmm. And and then that becomes a feeling of like, okay, this is this is the center of Rome, but it really wasn't. Yeah. So the Colosseum, the Roman this Forum. This is on the outskirts. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. exactly. So the circus where where the Vatican is now was outskirts. Yeah, was so the Vatican outskirts. is not one of the seven hills of Rome. <clears throat> right. So mm -hmm. So but it's I mean, I'm telling you, this prison, like a dungeon. It, it, it housed a number of people of great notoriety before their mm. before their so, ultimate execution. So Rome, they didn't have the punishment of you didn't get two years in jail. Mm -hmm. There was no such idea of a punitive action of jail time. You awaited your your sentencing in a jail. There was no jail as punishment. So you were either being you were held in there to pay a fine, exonerated, or executed. Well, that's so, kind of like a jail because a prison would be more of your mandated sentence here. Like a jail just right. holds you that's before true. your sentencing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you walk into this place, I mean, I'm six foot one. I have to, I have to like bend over and and kind of like scrub, you know, you know, get low to the ground just to be able. And you imagine standing in there or being in there with no commode, nothing in this dark dungeonous type of an environment. And now, you know, as you're walking around and realizing that the spring of water that came up from the ground and, you know, allegedly St. Peter and St. Paul baptized people in that Mamertine prison. Right. Wow. And you, you really like get the, a strong sense of what they were able to accomplish in their captivity, which was huge yeah. in, in relationship to the preparation for their own martyrdom. Yeah. Mm. So, um, there, yeah, there's a small altar in there. Uh, so, like, some of the legends are that he was baptizing, like, the jailers and the jailer's daughters. Mm -hmm. And some of them are some of the saints that, you know, you've heard of. Yeah. Um, St. Paul, actually, this the Mamertine prison is tangentially in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So, in uh, 2 Timothy, Timothy 4, right? yeah. Yeah. he's writing to um, Timothy, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's a letter to Timothy. <laughs> but he's saying, come and visit me. That's, that's right. Because he doesn't think he's going to make it through the mm -hmm. winter because... Most of the time, people dropped in this well, and it was like a well. It, some people even consider that it might have been an old cistern that was then turned into, converted, converted into a jail. But he's like, he's asking for, and this is pretty cool, he's asking for Timothy to come visit him. Um, but also, he mentions uh, Claudian Linus. Now, Linus is the second pope. So again, it's just really cool. Like, he's in Rome, he's writing a letter, he's saying, come and visit me, and the second pope is like, hey, bring him too. That's it, so cool. That is That's excellent. Cool. Do you know? The, and it's it's right behind the uh, the monument of Vittorio Emanuele. Mm -hmm. So it's it's right there next to the forum. And this is an, and I like this because these are some things that people can miss when they go to Absolutely. Rome. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm excited to hear the other ones as well. I've so missed this two is, already, and I'm like, wow. Yeah, and it's oh, I, I yeah. didn't go there, but yeah. the blessing. I've I've been to all of these, and I wonder if you're going to identify something that you have on your list that I haven't been at. Yeah, I'm the way that to, we're moving. We're gonna do Which this is one. proof that you didn't read the show notes. <laughs> no, he did. I think I did. I read some Forgot of the show him. notes. This is the most prepared he's ever been. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, I'm intrigued. Let's let's go to the fourth spot. Okay, so we talked about how Rome is the the heart, the beating heart of the church, um, and this location has to do with hearts. Now, if Rome is the heart Sacre of the church, Quir? no, that's, that's a, that's be, a beautiful be, church. That's France. That's enough, France. Yeah. So no, but there's a basilica. If the if the heart of the church is Rome and the head of the church is the Pope, the heart of the Pope is an interesting physical object. Now, there is a church in Rome where there is the embalmed hearts of 22 popes. What? Yes. That is crazy. So it's in the um, the church of St. Vincent, Vincent and Anastasius at Trevi. Ah, San Vincente. Yeah. Right there in the Trevi Square? Yeah. I've, I've, I've been, been in never, that church. It's I've never been. Really? I've never been to that. Well, right. I had no idea there were hearts in there. Huh. So every pope, starting with Pope Sixtus V, when was Six, he? When was he? In 1583, okay. up to Pope Leo the Thirteenth, in Whoa. 1903, every single pope when they died, their heart was removed and put into this church and embalmed there. That's weird, but it's cool. Yeah. How many saints were in that group? None. None. Wow. None of them were. None of them were saints. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Pius the Tenth uh, was. He did not want he to be buried. Go, yeah. But so 22 hearts of the pope 
are buried in this church. Now today, oh, they're buried. They're not. No, like, no, no. They're just in their display. hearts. They're just displayed. their hearts. In yeah. In like, if you die, Father Rich, maybe we could do that here and put it on the table. <laughs> on the studio? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be in the wall. <laughs> little shelf over there. <laughs> Instead of elf on the shelf. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's bleeding liberal heart. <laughs> <laughs> Father Rich is not a liberal. I just tease him. He because does give me a hard time all yeah, the time. All the time. So, yeah, I mean, this church, pretty, pretty interesting that. I mean, for 400 years, every heart of the Pope is buried there. I mean, and it's just just right there. And so many people walk past it. It's cool. just such an interesting And relic. it's in a very popular area. Yeah. And the square is beautiful. Yeah. There's a great restaurant around the corner that makes the best octopus in really? all of Rome. There's best a really good ice cream around. place there, too. Oh, there's everywhere. <laughs> gelato. Oh, yeah, gelato. Oh, oh man. They'll do ice true. cream. They do real Roman gelato. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but okay. you can get squid ink gelato. Ooh. Yeah. Extra tentacles, right. uh, please. Oh, thanks. So that's a pretty cool church, but, uh, you know, kind of something different now. So you did it, dude. I mean, that's one area I have not, I have not been. But you that's could probably, great. you know, if you want to in the morning, one of the days, yeah. you and I would walk over there. Psst, not going to be great. far. Yeah, that sounds great. So anyone who wants to go again, if you want to find out more about how you can go on this pilgrimage, go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash pilgrimage. You can find out uh, the whole full thing, itinerary, yeah. how to get signed up. Uh, this is a really great, really affordable trip. You know, there's your flight to Poland, your flight to Rome, your flight back from Europe to home. Uh, a lot of the meals, a, all, a of your of your meals all the transportation, the bus, trans your hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are really covering everything and uh, going to be pretty, pretty awesome. So we want you to go with us now. And we want you to go to this next spot, which I don't know if either of you guys have been there. It's the Basilica of the Holy Cross in Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. Santa Croce. That's a necessary spot. Were you there? I was in Jerusalem for a long time. No, with my no, wife. this is in Rome. In Rome, uh, it's it's what houses the the greater relic of the the true cross that Saint yeah. Helen brought back to so, Rome. So yeah, I mean, when it comes to the churches that have a, a great number of relics, there's there's churches all throughout Rome that have a ton of relics, but this one's one of the most impressive ones from memory because they have pretty obscure relics that, that a lot of people don't know about. Really important relics. Now, yeah. St. Saint, saint Helena is the patron saint of archaeologists, and she went to, at the commission of her son, she went to Jerusalem and found all the holy sites. Um, she found the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and the Church of the Nativity, and she brought a lot of these relics back with her to this part of her house, which eventually became her personal chapel, which mm. this church was built around. And some of the relics that they have in this church are the, this one's really cool. They have the the finger, the index finger of St. Thomas the Apostle, Downing wow. Thomas, the finger that he stuck into the side of Jesus. That's amazing. That's crazy. I am so devoted to St. Thomas the Apostle. I've spent some time at his tomb in India, and I had no idea that his finger is housed in the in that church. In Santa Croce. Wow. Wow. Um, another one is, now this is one of my very favorite relics in the world, and I cannot wait to see it. It's so important to me, and that's the titulus. Now, if you ever see above a crucifix, you see INRI, mm -hmm. right? Everyone's like, what does INRI mean, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the inscription that's in the gospel that uh, Pontius Pilate ordered to be nailed above Jesus' head in a semi-mock, well, in a directly mocking way, the king of the Jews, right? So it means... Uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus Nazorum mm -hmm. Rex Ideum, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, King of the Jews. That piece of wood is called the titulus, and that is housed in this what? church. Oh. And it has it in Hebrew, just like in the Gospels, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. Wow. We are and, going to see this. And, We're and going to see that? There's been oh, studies awesome. done on it. It is 2,000-year-old olive wood. There's great books written on it. It is legit. I mean, it's legit. I Man, man, that is so. That, that is the sign that hung above his head. That is the first proclamation of his kingship that the world could see. And it's so. I mean, it's from the cross. Mm. It hung above his head as wow, he was being dude. crucified. Wow. Um, there's also two thorns from the crown of thorns. There. There is um, one of the nails that was used in the crucifixion is also housed oh there. Oh, my God. And wooden fragments of the true cross. If we're mm -hmm. going there, I don't think I'm going to be able to keep it together. No, I... I <clears throat> and then it's all, there's also a, a pile of soil that St. Helena brought back from Jerusalem 
to transplant it to Rome so that people who could not make the pilgrimage to Jerusalem were able to physically make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem by touching this dirt and seeing these relics. That's why it's called the Basilica of the Holy Cross in Jerusalem. Now, it's not in Jerusalem, it's in Rome, but because it's bringing Jerusalem yeah. to Rome. It's it's the Terra Sancta, you know, the holy Absolutely. the holy earth. And it's it's housed in all these different, you know, rosaries. I have a ton of rosaries with the with the Terra Sancta in it. And that's a really cool pastoral thing to do because how many people, you know, can't go to the or Holy couldn't Land or couldn't it. afford yeah. to go to the Holy Land, but you know, to be able to go to this beautiful place of memory and relic you know, a reliquary yeah. uh, to be able to honor that. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see that and really excited to go with that. So where are we at now? That's five? Five. five. That's five. Yeah. Let me make sure because, you know. I hope the holy I hope the holy stairs are are one of them. They are. So actually that was five. So number six, we would do that. That's okay. the the Scala Sancta. Yep. And that's the Holy Stairs. Santa so, Scala. Mm-hmm. That is in the, it's right across the street from well, St. John Lateran. No, it's in St. John Lateran. No, it's across the, it's across the street. Mm. It is. Yeah, it's not. It's it's housed in a separate location. My, my money's on Father Rich on this one. Yeah, I would. I, would I stayed. I stayed with a religious community of sisters uh, right behind the the Santa You're Scala. right. You're right. It's, so it's part of the complex, but it's in mm-hmm. separate buildings. It's, it's yeah. stairs. It's all in the same area. Yeah. Is that okay. where Pontius Pilate was standing? So up on there, top are, or there something? was. So when Jesus was. Can we take a moment and just pause and realize that Delacroix said that I'm going to side with Father Rich for just a moment? I think that's. Well, I mean, I you're that, was that was groundbreaking. Yeah. You've been there. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I will concede that gladly to you. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much that you concede to me. Oh, I, yeah. I concede when it is due. <laughs> So and it, it is due. And it is due. It is so due. if it doesn't happen a lot, make it do more happen. I just <laughs> do, 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 do. Mountain Dew. Uh, Mountain Dew. By what? What's one of our sponsors? Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. <laughs> Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. <laughs> We're working up to there. Call us. Um, so yeah. Anyway, these are the stairs housed across the street from St. John Lateran <laughs> that were part of the complex that. Um, Pontius Pilate, where he had the trial of Jesus. And these are the 33 stairs, which is also very relative to the years of our Lord's life, that Jesus had to climb up to when he was having, you know, you know, ecce homo, behold the man, right? Mm-hmm. When they were having the trial of Pontius Pilate, when they were saying crucify him, this is the stairs he had to walk up to and face his judgment. Mm-hmm. And, and this is after a night of starvation, of torture, of torture, of all these different, and then climbing up these stair, these 33 stairs, and to to see the devout people of God, the faithful, that throughout generations climb up on these stairs on their on knees, their knees yeah. and to realize every step, you know, is reverenced and people are kissing the steps and resting their heads on the steps and they're bringing their own suffering to pair with Christ's. It is a beautiful place of devotion. Mm-hmm. And as you climb up these stairs very slowly, you begin to image what Christ himself was facing in the, in the, in this, basically the, the, the pivotal moment of his self offering to us in, in that atoning sacrifice. I mean, it is an incredible place of prayer. I mean, it's truly part of the way of the cross, but in Rome. I mean, mm-hmm. these are the stairs that he walked up. Uh, St. Helena, again, brought these back. I mean, and these were obvious. These ones, I have no doubt that these are accurate because everyone would have known where the praetorium in Jerusalem was, right? Because that was the, the you know, Roman garrison, essentially. So this would not have been am- ambiguous, they would have been able to identify it. And she had these 33 marble stairs from the Praetorium in Jerusalem brought back to Rome and just absolutely amazing. Now, I've done the Via Crucis many, many, many times, the Way of the Cross, Fridays during Lent. And I've had different experiences prayerfully with that. Um, certainly, you know, the the Stations of the Cross, <coughs> up Cross Mountain, Mount Krishavek in in Medjugorje was a very, very powerful place for me to experience firsthand the passion of Christ. And then obviously the way of the cross in Jerusalem, when you're, when you're doing that way, I mean, it's intense because you're carrying a cross. There's so much going on around you. You can get different reactions from the crowd as, as you're, as you're doing that. But for me personally, the, the Santa Scala slows everything down Mm -hmm. and it is such a solemn quiet remembrance 
that every step on your knees, which is painful for, you know, for me and, and, you know, to realize that every step slows you down and you meditate so deeply. It's, it's one of the most powerful places where I've reflected on that via Crucis, even more so than Jerusalem and, and some of these other locations. So, you know, a cool aspect of this is that what is what's at the top of those stairs. And I know you've taken those stairs and up top, when you get up there, there's that painting of Christ. And according to tradition, this was painted by St. Luke, but then not completed because of he, he had a flea and that it was completed by an angel after he had left. So that's that painting that's at the top of these stairs. And on our pilgrimage, we'll see what allegedly was painted by St. Luke, the image of Our Lady of Chestahova, where right. we'll celebrate Mass and consecrate the parish of St. John Paul II in, in Nakati, Ponte Vedra, Florida, where I'm currently the administrator. We're going to consecrate the parish to her, but that's, that is also associated with St. Luke. And this this painting as well, almost like bookends. It's beautiful. Yeah, and it's a plenary indulgence climbing the stairs. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're coming on this pilgrimage and you got some a uh, little bit of junk on your soul, if, you know, Father, I'm sure will be celebrating Mass and people and will have chances for, 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 for confession. Sure. So this is an indulged act. Um, we're at a plenary indulgence for full remission of the temporal guilt of your sins, and you know, you Mercy. can't you can't. Uh, Put too much value on that. Mercy, man. That's mercy. Well, that's what it's all about. All right, so that was number five. Number six. Well, actually, that was... No, that was number six. Mm -hmm. This is the last number one. Number seven. Oh, the last one. Number okay. one. So that's uh, San Silvestro in Capite. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the church where they house the head of St. John the Baptist. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Have you ever seen it? No. Is see, it incorruptible? But I don't think it's... it's it, there's other things at that church as well. Oh. Um, besides St. John the Baptist's head. Well, there's three popes buried there as well. Uh, Pope St. Sylvester, St. Stephen, Tars and, and uh, Tar Tar Tarsitius. Tarsitius, yeah. Tarsitius was a deacon at Rome who was martyred That's carrying right. the uh, the Eucharist through the streets, and he was martyred. On the via, on the... Uh, Appian Way. Appian Way. That's right. A mob yeah. came and killed him, but he wouldn't... Where the Quo Vadis took place, which That's is right. also a very, very powerful place to visit. Yeah, so they, then there's also part of the head of St. John the Baptist. Oh, right I didn't there. know that. So again, I mean, you're walking through Rome and you're going to the places where you think you should go, but you're missing things like, if you've went to Rome and you've missed these things, you have missed things like the head of St. John the Baptist, the stairs that Jesus walked up, the titulus that hung above the head of Jesus Christ, the prison that Paul and Peter are in. I mean, these are some sites in Rome that every Catholic should see before they die. Mm -hmm. Thanks mm -hmm. for uh, piling it on, guys. <laughs> well, you're not dead yet. <laughs> So when we go to Rome together, I mean, we're definitely going to get the chance to see these things. I went to some good restaurants. Oh, Taverna buddy. Flavia. Right, so here, here's a, here. We're going to, I guess, go right into the Inquisition. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's do it. Uh -huh. But we're going to take it really easy on you. Really? Because okay. we need you alive for this pilgrimage. <laughs> if it weren't for this pilgrimage, it'd be off with your head. Uh -huh. And we'd put it right in, uh, right next to John the Baptist. In a box. In a box. We wouldn't even want to see it. It'd be gruesome. <laughs> so we're going on this pilgrimage, May 13th to the 22nd. Uh, go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash pilgrimage to find out how to sign up. When we're in Rome, mm -hmm. you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. You've been there. What should people eat? And what are some of your favorite restaurants in Rome? And what are some experiences besides this? From I guess maybe just a culture standpoint that they cannot miss out on. Well, there's a there's a couple of locations around the Vatican that I'd like to show some people. Uh, great great spots, great views, and uh, kind of more local local cuisine. Um, but certainly my favorite area for food and entertainment is the Pantheon. And there's a, I believe it's like Armando's or something mm -hmm. like that, which yeah. is excellent. And it's my, one of my favorite restaurants uh, in Rome itself. Um, and then right around the corner from that that location, Hotel Minerva has a, a rooftop bar overlooking the the ceiling nice. of the Pantheon. A lot of people don't know about that. It's very close to Gamarelli's and Barbaconi's, where all of your, you know, if you if you want to get, so, you know, I actually want to go to Gamarelli's. Okay. Tell, tell them what Gamarelli's is. So Gamarelli's is the most famous clerical attire yeah. tailor. Probably the most famous tailor in the world. In the world, without he a makes doubt. the pope's clothes for for for, for centuries. For centuries, the family yeah. has. And oh yeah, you, and you can go in there and you could buy clothes for yourself from the same tailor as the pope. You can get like so socks many people and... from the UK just go to that location to buy their socks. They buy these red socks at the Cardinals. You can get red or purple. Red socks. or purple socks. 
I'm oh, definitely getting a pair of people that. from the UK go yeah, there and get cool. those those types of socks. Uh, but I which, have, by the I way, have a cassock we... from from uh, Gamarelli's that was made for me for you know my ordination and whatnot. Is it like really expensive? It is pretty They're expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. a gift for one from a family yeah. to me the the cassock because it is pretty expensive. I got six kids. I ain't buying you nothing. On this trip. <laughs> but the problem is I don't fit into my <laughs> cassock anymore. <laughs> I'm working on the celibacy belly, man. I need an expansion, you know, one of those expandable cassocks. Run around the track a few times. I do. I Does do. Dockers make cassocks? <laughs> Dockers. <laughs> they're, they're a runner up to Gamarelli. So, what's your favorite thing yes. to eat in Rome? Octopus. Um, you know, certainly like a, uh, my favorite all time, Frutta di Mare. Okay. You know, the, the fruit of the sea. Shrimp. That's scallops, shrimp. Oh, yeah. buddy. It is. I, I, will, I will just go to a street vendor and walk around while there's being present. <laughs> things are being presented. And I'm just like <laughs> crunch, mowing crunch. down on Fruta de Mare the whole trip. So you will definitely see that in my hands. If Cocky you're Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, buddy. That's cheese and pepper. Cheese and pepper. I know, but the way you, the way you just said that just cracked me up. Um, but, yeah, the, the street vendors, great food. You can't go wrong anywhere in Italy. Yeah. Wherever you want to eat, the food is outstanding. The now pastries in the morning, the cappuccinos, the doppio espressos, the, you know, if you need a if you need Limoncello. a ca cafe to go from the hotel, you just say, ah, la porta via, you know, cafe a porta via. Like, I want to take this coffee to go. The coffee's excellent. So is all it of like that, a Olive Garden? <laughs> <laughs> if you're an Olive Garden regular, you, you will be ruined on this trip. Like you will that. never eat an Olive Garden again. Well, unless you keep going to Olive Garden because you never order the same thing twice. <laughs> That's <No>. true. <laughs> No, now, this, I'm, I'm thinking, guys, you know, there's so many places that we didn't name. These seven locations are are certainly up there. I was really trying to find obscure ones that not enough yeah, people go which to. Is, and you you named two of them that, that I've, I've really, I've been at, and I just, I don't have great recollection because it's been so many years. So I'm looking forward to visiting those locations again. But certainly like the Appian Way, the Catacombs. You know, the major basilicas is super important to, we are, to visit. This, uh, we are doing a tour of all the major basilicas. Yeah, and, and How long are we going to be there for? Uh, three days. Three days? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, cool. and, and the nice thing is, is we're going to tour around the forum at night, every, you know, showing everyone where these locations are. Mm. Absolutely. So while, while we are in Rome, some of the things that we're going to do that are scheduled, um, we're going to have a papal audience. So we're going to be in St. Peter's Square when the Pope comes by, and he's going to give the blessing to the audience there. Cool. And he'll um, that's talk in look, uh, Spanish or Italian. It's just it's it's the opportunity of a lifetime to be in St. Peter's Square when the Pope is there. Uh, it's just it's powerful. That's the Vicar of Christ. Yeah. Um, we're also going to be going uh, to the Vatican Museums and the Basilicas of Rome. Now, the Vatican museums are just absolutely... Oh, you could spend like two days. You could spend a lifetime there. in there yeah. and never yeah. catch up to it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then the Basilicas of Rome. So we're going to be going to all of those. We'll see the Sistine Chapel. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that you, you would expect to do. And we're making mm -hmm. sure that you Pretty cool, get yeah. to do these very... And, and there are indulgences tied to these to these mm -hmm. locations yeah. of, of prayer. And, you know, speaking of the Vicar of Christ, I think it would be very, very helpful as we're discerning what pilgrimage is and certainly these seven locations in Rome that, that one must see before you die. I, I want to share the, the words of Pope Francis uh, toward the conclusion of the Holy Year. He said, the practice of pilgrimage has a special place because it represents the journey each of us makes in this life. Life itself is a pilgrimage and the human being is a viator a pilgrim traveling along the road, making their way to the desired destination. May pilgrimage be an impetus to conversion. By crossing the threshold of the four papal basilicas, we will find the strength to embrace God's mercy and dedicate ourselves to being merciful with others as the Father has been with us. And it calls to mind that uh, section of the catechism that describes life as in statu vie, in a state of journeying, in a state of pilgrimage, that our whole our whole sense of life and our sense of following Christ, embracing our cross and following him, is this movement toward the kingdom, toward heaven. And along the way of the pilgrimage of life, we get to develop great fellowship with one another in the faith that is entrusted to us. Very well said. Good mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You read very, very well. 
Oh, but that, that was not all reading. That was, that was, that, that was dude, he was throwing ministry down. Right? <laughs> it was popping and locking. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was really awesome, and I think you know your reflections on that really do speak to the heart of why pilgrimage is so important, yeah. and and how it edifies the life of of the Catholic. Um, I'm looking forward to going on pilgrimage yeah, with you me guys. Too. Yeah, and, yeah, and once again, if you want to find out more about this pilgrimage, go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash pilgrimage, and we hope to see you along the roadways of the ancient city of Rome. Mm.